Delta is the most common Greek in options trading, and you've probably heard of it, but have you heard of Delta dollars? It's an important risk management metric, and honestly, I couldn't live without it in my trading. I've been using it for a very long time. So today we're going to delve into what Delta dollars is, how you can use it, and how it will improve your risk management. So let's get stuck into it. Just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only and is general in nature. So Delta dollars is also known as notional Delta, and it's the product of position Delta and the underlying stock price. It represents the dollar value of an option position's exposure to the underlying asset. Suppose you own a long call with a delta of 40 and the underlying stock is trading at 100. The delta dollars figure would be 40 times the stock price of 100 equals 4,000. So that's our delta dollars number, $4,000. This means your option position is equivalent to having $4,000 invested in the stock. Doesn't mean your risk is $4,000. It doesn't mean you can lose $4,000. It just means your directional exposure at that point in time is equivalent to having $4,000 invested in the stock. So you might be starting to understand why it's important. Delta dollars is heavily influenced by the price of the stock. If we compare a stock with a price of 500, and we again look at a call with a delta of 40, the delta dollars figure becomes 40 times 500 equals 20,000. So in this case, we're still taking the 40, which is the delta, but instead of timesing it by 100, we're multiplying it by 500, and that gives us $20,000 delta dollar figure and that is a much bigger exposure than the 4,000 in the previous example. So here we've got a simple example of a long call option in Apple. It's a leap option, September 26. The delta is 43.56. If we take that figure, multiply it by 100, because each option contract is 100, so 43.56 times the stock price gives us our delta dollars figure of just over 11,000. It doesn't mean we can lose $1,000, it just means that this position at this point in time is equivalent to having $11,000 invested in Apple stock. And this figure will change as Apple moves up and down and this delta changes, this delta dollars number will change as well. So we're all getting changes in the delta and also changes in the stock price, with both of which are going to affect the delta dollars number. So here within Interactive Brokers Risk Navigator, we've got three delta columns. This first one is the strike delta. This is our position delta, which is just this number times 100 times the number of contracts. And then the position delta times the stock price gives us our delta dollars figure. So you'll see if we change the number of contracts, this number isn't going to change because that remains constant. It's just the strike delta. But our position delta and our delta dollars will change. So you can see now this number didn't change, but this number doubled and therefore this number doubled as well. So why does it matter? Well, here's where Delta Dollars becomes your secret weapon. It tells you your overall directional exposure. This metric instantly shows you how much market risk you're taking on. If your Delta Dollars exposure exceeds your account size, that's a red flag for taking excessive risk. With Delta Dollars, you can see it clearly and act before it becomes a problem. So I've just set up a sample portfolio here. We've got some tech stocks, an SPY position, and a low beta underlying in Coca-Cola. They're all bullish positions. Some of them are bull put spreads, some of them are long calls, some of them are short puts. Overall, they've all got positive delta dollars. And again, each individual position is the position delta times the stock price. So you might notice a really high value stock like Netflix has a low delta of six, but it has quite a high delta dollars. And it actually has a higher delta dollars than Amazon, which has a higher position delta of 17. So that's why the stock price is so important in the calculation. Now, if we had a portfolio of a million dollars and this was our exposure, that's a pretty low exposure. But if we have an account size of only $10,000 and our delta dollars is 47,000, 4.7 times our account size, that's taking on too much risk. We've got a much larger directional exposure than we have capital. Again, we're not necessarily gonna lose $47,000 because it depends on the underlying positions. And I'll show you an example. Here we've got an Amazon bull put spread. Our maximum loss is just below $1,700 but our delta dollars is high. We're not gonna lose three and a half thousand dollars. This is still our maximum risk. This is just our current directional exposure. So we wanna look at this delta dollars number on each individual position. And we also want to look at it on the portfolio level as a whole. And if the market's a little bit bearish, we'd probably wanna add some negative delta positions to help offset some of our positive delta and some of our directional risk. We don't necessarily want to have all bullish positions. Let's talk about setting some rules around Delta Dollars. The key is personalizing your Delta Dollar rules. Some traders cap their exposure at 50% of their account size. 
Others choose 25% for conservative trading or even 200% for more aggressive traders. There's no one size fits all answer. Find what aligns with your risk tolerance and stick with it. And part of that comes from experience. But I would suggest when starting out, try to keep that number fairly low or that ratio or the percentage. For me, I definitely like to keep it below a one-to-one -one ratio with my account size or 100%. Delta dollars isn't just for portfolio monitoring. It can guide individual strategies too. Take an iron condor. If you set a 2x delta dollars rule, you know exactly when it's time to adjust your position. And this is a rule I have with my own trading when I'm doing iron condors. There's no guesswork involved, just clear signals based on your predetermined risk parameters. Let's take a look at an example. So here we've got a pretty standard iron condor setup. Overall, we're pretty neutral. We've got zero position delta and our overall delta dollars is only 62. Very, very neutral. We can see we've got a nice flat T plus zero line. We're evenly spaced, pretty much perfect starting position. Delta dollars of 62 compared to our capital of risk of 400 is very, very low. This example's a little bit different. The stocks maybe moved down a little bit. We're not centered anymore. We've got a 28 delta here and only a five delta here. And our delta dollars at 1000 is quite high compared to our capital at risk of $350. So again, I set a rule of 200 or 2x. So if I'm risking 350 on an iron condor, I want to adjust when this delta dollars number gets to 700. I don't want to leave it until it gets to 1000. I want to adjust a little bit earlier. Again, that's just my rule. You might want to come up with your own rules, but start thinking about it and thinking about delta dollars in terms of your risk on your individual trades and your portfolio as a whole. Now, Interactive Brokers is the only platform I'm aware of that shows this delta dollars number, but you can very easily calculate it if we take our position delta times the underlying stock price, and that'll give us our delta dollars. So very, very easy and quick calculation that you can just do in Excel or on a calculator. As an option trader, delta dollars should be on your radar constantly. Monitor your exposure, set clear rules, and adjust positions based on both individual trades and total account size. You've now unlocked a powerful risk management tool, and I really hope it helps you with your trading. Thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Reach out anytime with questions, and have a great day.